Okay, welcome back. This is the second part of the Impressionism lecture. In the first one, we talked all about Monet. This one, we kind of talk about everybody else. We're going to start with Berta Morisot. She wasn't free to prowl the city looking for modern subjects, so she concentrated mostly on depictions of women's lives. We will look more at Berta Morisot later on in this lecture, but for now I just want you to sort of look at the brushstrokes in this and notice that the colors and the brushstrokes themselves are as prominent as like the subject matter itself. She was a big proponent of really pronounced brushstrokes. And again, this is typical of Impressionist painting. This is um, Auguste Renoir. This is called the luncheon of the boating party at the Moulin de la Galette. And this is um, interesting because he sort of embraces these new types of subjects that are taken from modern life. New public spaces of the dance hall, the cafe, the bar, the theater, the weekend outing. His style is very feathery uh, with visible brush strokes and intense color. It's almost as if he's channeling Watteau as an impressionist. These paintings are more classically composed. He was a bit more conservative than other impressionists. One of the things that Renoir did really well is he painted Paris after Haussmann had sort of taken over and changed everything. There was this kind of mixing of social classes and these new forms of entertainment. And Renoir wanted to portray that in his paintings. And these are pretty pictures. And he's quoted as saying, for me, a picture should be a pleasant thing, joyful and pretty. Yes, pretty. There aren't quite enough unpleasant things in life without the need for us to manufacture more. And this is the eternal struggle, I think, of most um, artists, is that are, are we supposed to paint reality and how awful it is? Or do we paint the pretty things and remind others how great life can be? And Renoir chose the latter. He chose, I'm going to paint what's great about life. And you might think that I'm overlooking all of the awfulness in the world, but we don't need to be reminded of that all the time. Here's another painting of the Moulin de la Galette, and I'm going to have a video for you to watch so you can kind of learn more about this place. But this shows a relaxed and informal crowd at a dance hall. It's a daytime dance hall. And the artist sought to capture a carefree life or a paradise removed from the real world. And he, like Monet, was also interested in capturing the fleeting effects of light. I mean, if you look at this painting, you'll see like the, the light and shadows interacting on the dance floor, if you can call it that, or maybe the man's jacket that's sitting sort of right in the front and the, the black jacket with the chair. So he, he was also interested in, you know, capturing a moment, which goes back to photography. Even the cropping. I mean, if you look at that woman on the left, there's like half a face there. And speaking of um, photographic influence, there's no one, I think, more influenced by it than Degas. I mean, this painting right here is all cropping and, you know, weird angles. If you notice the woman on the left, it's like half a woman. Right in front, you see the tops of the instruments. There's this empty expanse at the front of the stage. This is a painting by Degas, and it's called The Rehearsal Stage. And your book talks about this a bit, so I'm not going to do go into it too much but he painted in his studio he wasn't a plein air painter like the other impressionists he had rigorous academic training he was more of a traditional painter than the other impressionists he contrived and manipulated his compositions because he wanted there to be this dynamic and sort of complex compositional structure to it there is some social commentary in here as well so with monet where there's not much narrative there's a story in here not a whole bunch, but I mean enough to make something out of. For example, those men on the right, those are the protectors, in quotes, of these dancers. Basically just means that these dancers are also prostitutes. So this isn't a real scene that Degas actually looked down upon. This is like a composition of a bunch of sketches that he did. It's a contrivance that he viewed from the angle of as if he's in the opera box watching. And this provides a sort of a strange downward angle. And this is directly from Japanese prints, which we'll talk about in the third part of this lecture. Degas' later images include intimate scenes of bathing women. This tub is kind of seen from a domineering vantage point. And what does that mean exactly? That he was 
like a peeping Tom, or he's making this for peeping Tom kinds of people. It's hard to say with Degas if this is like a kind of a weird perversion, or if it's just him trying to convey sort of the life of a woman that we don't usually get to see. Is he a proto-feminist, giving us glimpses in the not-so-glamorous life of a woman, or is he a little creepy and a peeping Tom? It's, it's hard to say, actually. I don't know the answer to it. But he made a lot of paintings like this, and he had a follower and a woman that we'll look at at the end, um, Mary Cassatt, who uh, emulated him and painted a lot of paintings of women in this same sort of style and ang angle. However, hers were more like mother and child, which we'll look at. Kayabat's an interesting painter because unlike his um, other Impressionist buddies, he was independently wealthy, so he wasn't struggling and he didn't have to kick out paintings and have them look a certain way. And his painting style is different. You lose the sort of brushiness that um, a lot of the Impressionists have. Nonetheless, he paints modern life as the Impressionists did. He might be closer to uh, like Manet and a realist as opposed to the Impressionists. But nonetheless, he was friends with them. He believed in them. He supported them. He showed with them. So he had this fascination with the regularized radiating streets of Paris, the Paris that Haussmann built. His asymmetrical composition made the streets as important as the bustling anonymous crowds. So he tried to make Paris the city a subject as well as the people who lived in Paris. And this is interesting too because there's this clash of classes in this painting. You have symbols of the modern city, there's a guy with a ladder, there's a lady over the shoulder of the fancy lady who looks like a washerwoman, um, but then there's fancy people walking along too. And he captures this ephemeral effect of light, and that's kind of what makes it impressionist. The Floor Scrapers is easily my favorite painting by Kayabat, and until now, nearly all pictures of men and women at work were in country scenes, like farm workers or peasants, like we saw in The Gleaners by Millet or The Stonebreakers by Courbet, but Kayabat is taking the focus and putting it inside these fancy houses. These are the people that do the hard work to rebuild or build Paris. He combines this careful drawing and modeling and exact tonal values that were advocated by the Academy. And then he uses vivid col colors and bold perspectives and this keen sense of natural light and modern subject matter that was embraced by the Impressionists. So he's combining both styles, which is another wonderful thing about Kayabat. And it could have been his independent wealth allowed him to sort of do this, right? You, he didn't have to pick a side because he didn't matter if he sold these or not. However, this painting was actually rejected by the Salon in 1875 because they said it was too vulgar in its realism. So Kayabat decided to joined the Impressionist group, they were his friends anyway, and the following year he re-exhibited this floor scrapers um, painting at the second Impressionist ex exhibit in 1876. Here's another Impressionist painter, this is Mary Cassatt. She was an American expatriate who was living in Paris and she became friends with Degas. And as I had mentioned earlier with Degas' um, woman bathing, she uh, kind of adopted his style of these kind of strange angles in which it was like you were looking down at a scene without being seen as the painter. Now, as I'd also mentioned with Berta Morisot, women painters were restricted as to where they could go or what they could paint, so her subject matter tends to be domestic. She sought to counteract the cliched conceptions of the domestic and social life of bourgeois women. In other words, you expect them to be haughty and, and you know, not loving of their children, but she wanted to show that these women cared for their children just as much as the lower classes did. This painting features contrast between loosely painted clothing and solidly modeled forms of the faces and hands. So you can see that she really focused on the figures but she wanted also to incorporate Impressionist brushwork, which she was able to do in the clothes. And one last thing, which is really interesting, and I didn't talk about it with Degas, is the almost skewed perspective of like that pitcher or the tub and the other one or the things on the shelves of the Degas are, are similar in this, in that 
because of the angle, things look a little weirdly out of perspective. Now, when we go to the post-impressionists and we talk about Cezanne um, and other post-impressionists, you'll see this like pronounced. It's like the thing that they gravitated toward about the impressionists was this, this idea of skewing perspectives. But we'll talk about that later. Okay, I'm going to end the second part here because in the third part, we're going to talk about not so much painters themselves, but what influenced them or what they were trying to say with their paintings. And so this is just like a recap of all the big names in Impressionism. And then in the third part, we'll talk about like specific subject matter uh, that they were working on.